All right, welcome to the Forge Coffee Break. Uh, this is the episode number 64. Thank you very much for joining. Actually, our best platform services uh, for the Forge Coffee Break. Um, as usual, this is a very open space. Uh, any questions or topics or ideas that you want to uh, bring up? And, um, and usually I start with you. If you have any questions or topics that you'd like to bring up, please just open your microphone. You can also uh, turn on your camera if you like. Welcome. Hi. Uh, hi. Hi. Uh, Augusto. Uh, just, uh, I, have a, I have a very basic question, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, this is regarding this design automation. Uh, if I understand correctly, design automation uh, require mainly three things. One is the uh, uh, this Forge or uh, API, Autodesk API cloud credit. And this, uh, if you want to store the model, then we require uh, AWS or Azure uh, storage. And then if you want to now upload it in the server or deploy to the server, then we require Azure or AWS uh, server. My question is, uh, can you do can you do the design automation for a big size file or model having more than 500 elements and a very complex form? If I talk about the iLogic form, is it possible to do that? Uh, or in future also, uh, are you means in that line to do something or uh, how it is? Actually, uh, I was trying to find out like if if I have a big model and somebody want to use this uh, uh, model in a server. So is it possible? All right. Uh, and you're trying to use Inventor, right? Uh, yes, Inventor. Is it, uh, uh, is it iLogic? You're trying to automate some processes? Yes. Do you have that running locally? Uh, yes, locally it can be run. OK, cool. Um, all right, so design automation. Um, use the exact same engine you have on your local environment. So if you can run it locally, it's a good sign that you can run it on the cloud. The only question that remains is that if the code that you have can run as a, as a black box, right? Meaning you just say, run it, we'll do the whole thing for you and give it back the results, right? Now, uh, if that's not the case, you may do some changes there to, to make it work like that. Remember the automation will get the input, run that for you, and give you back the output. Make sense? Yes. OK, so other than that, if it's, if it's running locally, you can, you can run, run the cloud. You don't need AWS or Azure storage. You can use you know, APS, OSS as well. The only thing that you actually need is somewhere on the cloud where your models are hosted so the automation can grab that and execute for you. Right? So it can be, it can, it can be anywhere. We have samples using our storage, the Autodesk OSS storage, but we also have samples with AWS, Azure, and other, other locations, right? It's really up to you. And uh, the last part of your question was if you can run 500, 5,000? 500, I'm talking about five, more than 500 elements on that. Yeah, uh, so yeah. I think the question is if it's it, it is running locally, right? So design automation, it's 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 a Windows machine with Inventor running on that, right? So if you can run, if you can run it locally, you can also run on the, run on the cloud. Um, and what sorry, what about the form? Because in locally, if I run the form, is very complex, like tab tab, then lots of inputs. But what about then in uh, if we do it? Uh, yeah, that's the, that's exactly it, right inputs right so design automation is is a is a black box kind of environment so you have to provide all the input at the beginning then we'll run for you and give you back the results okay so what i would suggest you to do is to try one of our tutorials have you tried any of those so aps.autodesk.com then you go to getting started and uh, if you see tutorials there is a design automation tutorial, right? That shows you step by step on how to do that with no any of the engines. Uh, yes, here, here I can, uh, here I can tell you that suppose the width and height is only only there, but there is, if I say the input itself more than hundred, uh, how it looks, the look will be very complicated, right? Uh, well, yeah, but you can you can provide as a zip, right? The input can have hundreds of files. 
but can be a zip. Okay. Yeah. So th there are there are many different ways for you to to solve that problem, right? Can be a zip. Can be uh, you can have your design automation grab those files on demand as you need them. No, it 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 it's different, right? But I would say that um, it is possible. It's just a matter of a strategy on how to solve that problem. But for you to learn how it works, the tutorial is a place to start if you haven't done it yet. And then you can say, okay, now let me optimize doing zip or doing on demand or doing some some other approach. But the first thing is to do is try the tutorial. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So once you once you have done that. Uh, what you can do after say okay now i understand how it works you can come back to the community go to all events and uh you can book a time with us looking look at this option here look, the doctor is in so uh here you can book a time with someone on, on on the team to really discuss the best strategy to solve like you know very large data sets or large processes there's a lot lots, lots, lots of people that can help for inventor i would suggest adam Nagy based in the in England. And also um, you can find Maduka. He knows the automation very, very well. Yeah, it's a good place for you to start. Okay, thank you. That, that was actually I wanted. Yeah, so tutorials, then we can book some time to discuss the you know, very specific pieces. Uh, I would say that my first reaction would be to use a zip, but you can also do on demand depend on how many you have. Cool. Is that something that you are starting right now or you already have a, a, a requirements for that? Uh, no, I think, okay, it's okay for me. No, do you have the requirements for the application that you want to develop? Uh, oh. Actually, actually, yeah, actually it's like I, I was talking about now the equipment and like the heat exchangers. So mm -hmm. it's like very complicated. So many inputs are there. So mm -hmm. I, I was thinking if I want to use uh, from the cost effective also, because uh, the person who is running it, uh, the cloud credit and this all uh, the server requirement. And uh, now you are telling, okay, it can be run the local also. So I simply use this uh, only the, uh, uh, I mean to say the cloud credit only, not this Azure uh, storage. But what about this uh, uh, server for a deployment server is required, right? Without a server, I cannot deploy it uh, for, for that. Yeah, so the server is where you host your application, right? The piece that will coordinate the, the, the parts of that. But you still need cloud credits to run that on design automation. Yeah, I mean, so there's another engine is required. Uh, apart from yes. my yes. local computer, another engine in the cloud is required. So that your you also... Yeah. Yes, uh, your local is just for debugging, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So that, that was actually my thinking, the cost, how much cost implication will be there for this? Because uh, considering the complex, so is it, if it is a, in the, if the application can solve the problem locally, is it worth to put it in the cloud? Well, something to do some math, right? And maybe there is some, some error of workflow there. Maybe you need to run that on the cloud because you're connecting pieces, right? So um, uh, if you're running, hundreds and hundreds of jobs and there is no people there having to click some buttons to run that for you. You, you have to consider that as well. So there is a yeah. lot of factors, right? Uh, if you are running that locally with someone triggering the process or on the cloud automatically, right? So there, there are different workflows to be solved. Yes, correct. So maybe the question is a bit different, right? What is the workflow that you are trying to solve? Because it seems, it seems that that's not clear yet. What is the workflow that you are trying to solve here? Yeah, my, my workflow will be like, uh, the, I, I am first uh, making the iLogic and the form and then running it in the local server. And now it's working, the iLogic and the form is working. Now, mm -hmm. if I want to simply upload the whole zip file uh, to the design automation, then the other person who is do, I mean, uh, from the client side, you want to simply input that and then can, can generate the drawings or general mm -hmm. arrangement drawing, at least. Uh, yeah. Then later on, we can also give the other other drawings, like the detailed drawings that we can do and you can submit to them. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I, th I think we'll try the tutorial first. Let's see how, how that, how it, we have some you know, ground to, to review it. And uh, we can definitely book some time to really look at you know, the specifics there. I think Najoko, you did Inventor before, right? What uh, was um, not, not iLogic. 
So it's um, you, you know you know some of that. You, you have to try it locally, try the tutorials, and then um, yeah, we can discuss it better. Okay, thank you. Cool. Thank, thank you. you. A lot of blogs from Adam Nudge. Also, you can find it in the blog uh, session. Uh, learn, especially with the iLogic, because it's a very sensitive theme. Uh, you 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 mentioned you want to use. Uh, or uh, you are using uh, forms in your iLogic that is uh, forbidden on the server on a uh, port. So you have to uh, transform uh, that forms in something. Also, you can find that blog from other uh in, in a blog session. That is the most important thing is that to convert all the forms that are using in the in the iLogic in something uh, black box like uh, Augusto said about. But don't worry about uh, about uh, JSON file. I used one uh, JSON file with uh, 1,050 lines. It doesn't problem to send that. Uh, it's almost maybe of 1,000 parameters. It works normally. Good insight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, both of you. Welcome. All right. Any I, other? I, Questions? Yeah, I got a question on um, the first platform with uh, really the bridge that's been built on the ACC and using that or also the document management and moving files over. We're running into a big problem uh, trying to get it back to an RCW where it's a cloud work share model. Is there a way within the, the current API to get pull down one Revit file from an ACC and load it up to another ACC environment, but load it up as a RCW. So then it's a cloud work share, shared file. Um, I believe you can. Um, is anyone with Revit here? No. I believe you can cloud work share. You can trigger the process. And uh, let me see here. I, because we probably need to download that and then upload again as a work shared. So I would say that would be something like this to support cloud modules from the automation. You probably need to get that from one, probably disconnect from central or it gets connect that and then upload again and start a new work shared module, right? Is that what we're looking for? Yeah, so right now we're we're working on a um, rather large infrastructure project where owner needs us to pretty much pass the Revit files over every two weeks. And we started using Bridge since that got out there, but um, I mean, it works fine. They just can't use them as cloud work share models. So we're gonna have to download them and re-enable the work sharing. So we're, we kind of built something on our own that does the same thing, but we're trying to get it where it's that RCW. Um, we've, we've messed around with the, the RT app that's in beta right now, mm -hmm. um, but still looking to see when we might be able to actually do a Forge API command or function to actually enable the cloud work sharing instead of something where in design automation we could be you know basically get at the the step-by-step -step directions to enable the cloud work sharing reload it. So um I don't know I'd have to ask um if you could submit that through our support aps.help at autodesk.com then I would ask the uh um our, my my colleague in with 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 design automation for Revit, he'll know it better. Um, so aps.help at autodesk.com. Okay. If you can just give give a brief summary of what you're trying to achieve, and uh, we can check that. I, I don't have the answer right now. Okay, great. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Jacob. Sorry about that. No but a good place to start will be the work sharing, work shared blog posts. I believe that's something in here.
Boom. So I think that's this. Today is the second coffee break of the year. Um, and um, yeah, second. Hope you have interesting projects for this year. Autodesk is, is starting um, new fiscal year in, in February. So that's when we start the, our, our 2024 fiscal year. And uh, that includes you know, all the, uh, probably some new releases that will be coming shortly. So it's interesting. That's something that you are working with, with as well. So what are your plans for this year? Or just finish what we started last year? <laughs> yes, that should, should be finished. <laughs> <laughs> the old one and start with the new one. Yeah. Yes. We'll see. I'm planning to do something with documentation, like be problem with documentation and try to create some website for the community to, 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 to make it easier. We'll see how that will grow up. I also speak with uh, Peter yesterday or before. Yesterday, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Is it possible to? create something like open source and then uh, because of that uh, documentation for the uh, viewer for example it's a uh, generic documentation from the code from the comments yeah. code and uh, in that case also i understand in my life i didn't make any line of documentation for any uh, plugin that i made or adding because it is so much annoying typing and explaining. <laughs> but we will see how that project will <laughs> finish. But I have to first to start. Yeah. Usually, usually here we have uh, different teams, right? So the first team will write work on the API, and there is usually a second team that will connect with the team to draft and work on documentation. So it's it's a it's a different line of work, right? Yeah, it's really interesting to see how community yeah. is interested to join to that project. I'm planning to put that into GitHub and uh, share the link so we will see. Mm -hmm. Any, any uh, comments uh, would be great. And uh, I'm planning to make the links between blogs and uh, documentation, links <coughs> inside documentation to. to Create something like, uh, for example, for uh, Revit or, or um, Inventor adding there is a the ordinary documentation for the APIs for both of them. Maybe mm -hmm. if you are playing with that side, it will be perfect. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan, you raise your hand. Yes, uh, I just wanted to ask um, if you could give us a, a brief um, idea about the, there's a call for beta participant participation in the uh, parameter, online parameter API. Is that what it's called? Probably something else. Uh, like a, it looks like a, parameter API, which is not connected to a specific product. Do you know what, which uh, call for beta talking about? Yeah, so, yeah of course. Uh, just to uh, uh, answer, I think it was the same topic uh, from Nandjok was asking about documentation, right? So we did discuss that last coffee break about having some contributions in open source, right? And on our side, uh, I, I'm asking around here, how can we do it? Uh, just to you know, give you some feedback. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up again. Uh, Parameters API, that uh, it's coming uh, as, a, as a beta. Um, and I believe it should be there shortly. And it's really about uh, defining uh, the data that we store. So it's, um, it's part of the work. And uh, it's not here yet, um, but no, Probably, maybe, you know, in, in some, some couple of weeks, we should have that on our blog. And uh, I can share more details with you, Jonathan. I don't have that, all of those details yet. I was just seeing if Mikap is here, but just now. But no, it's, it's really about defining what kind of information you want to store. It's like um, a schema of the data. And that is independent of a specific product? 
Uh, I believe so. Yeah, I believe so. But we'll take some time to to expand to to more products. Okay, because um, I was just wondering whether you know how does it um, is it is it part of moving all the data into the cloud thing where I can now use some parameters. Sorry about the noise. Uh, yeah, no problem. Yeah, lots of people coming in and out. Uh, where I can store the data, um, and some of it, for example, will relate to data I have in Revit models, and some of it in the data in, in other bits of, the, of my system. Yeah, so it's it's somehow connected to the um, to the cloud information models that we have. Uh, you see that um, fusion data; it's one of those. Uh, we have a beta running for the uh, AIM information model, and so uh, sorry, AC information model. So it's it's connected to those. So it's defining how, what is the data that you're keeping uh, on with our database. So details should be coming short and I uh, probably you know, I know that they are reviewing that API that the documentation for it should, should be out uh, soon. And sorry, uh, I think um, probably when it's out there, I will ask someone from that team to come and, and give us some some details. Thank you. All right, any other topics? Interesting topic today. Sorry, I don't have that many answers, but I'll try to get more. So I let me share some stuff here then. I know that we talked before about, I, I believe we talked about multiple callbacks when creating a Forge app. Uh, the benefit of this is that you can um, have one or more test environment, right? Are you using this this kind of thing? Have you seen it? That allows you to have multiple callbacks. Right here. It's one interesting new feature. And... Uh, uh, the other one that is interesting is, let me share this one with you as well. Um, we are noticing uh, lots of people having trouble with SVF2 when they are trying to retranslate the module, right? So let's say you upload version one of your file to a bucket, translate to SVF2 and try to view it. Then you upload again that object with the same name and try to translate again, and the file is not uh, up, updating as, as it should, right? So we noticed that this is happening because people are using the same name, and uh, SVF2 engine tries to optimize uh, caching and other things for that file. So if you have a file with the same name, it may happen that um, the system will not update all the caches that, the, that, that, it, that it has. So one suggestion is to add some suffix or prefix to the file so you know there is a new version of that file. So we use that internally. We use this GUID-like name. But if you have your own files into, into OSS and translate into SVF2, it's good to add this prefix to avoid this kind of problem. I'm sure if you experiment, experienced this, this, this problem before, this issue before. So that's, that is coming more often now. I think people are starting to use more SVF2 and uploading files with the same name, especially if you have a uh, configurator and you know, uh, this kind of application, it usually outputs the same name and uh, it, eventually you get you know, the same file over and over that could cause some issues. All right, I think those are the two things that I have. Any other questions or topics? Well, question about uh, callbacks. 
is it possible to get some response from the edit from the plugin, for example, doing something on the plugin and just to send information to the server and uh, to the front end the, to uh, follow the progress, for example, to draw that uh, green line? That would be a, a web socket, right? Yes, to the web socket. Or, or I think but be... the web socket is really on your application, not on the Autodesk side. Right, because uh, it's your application. Uh, Plug-in on, on a server for a Revit or a it doesn't matter. Is it possible oh, okay. to... Okay, so you can use web sockets with design automation. Mm -hmm. Have you seen this one? Let me see. Uh, let me sh show here documentation. Uh, design automation. And uh, WebSocket API. WebSocket API, yes. Yeah. So with this, you could, from your plugin that is running inside Design Automation, you can trigger uh, yeah. um, a message, a WebSocket message, from the plugin to a client or or something like that. Yeah, that should be that. Yes. Yeah. Because in earlier period, I use that uh, AC ACI. I don't know the, the abbreviation ACI STP just to uh, send information uh, back, but it's very, very poor uh, uh, information to the send some string or something else. But that should be, I think that should be solution for, for that one. Yeah, web sockets, that's, that's what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll try this. Cool. Interesting point. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so any less questions? Okay, so we are just uh, ending up the time. Um, thank you very much for joining today. As usual, this next session will be in two weeks, February 8th. Same link, same time. And uh, thank you very much for joining today. It was a pleasure having you, few, having you here. I'm looking forward to have the uh, the details from Jacob on the work shared models. Please send that to us, Jacob. And uh, yeah, I'll, we'll try to reply there. And uh, thank you very much. See you in two weeks. See you. Right. Thank you, Mike.